Hello everyone, this is Goody, K3NG. This is the second video in this series, Getting Started with the K3NG Arduino CW Keyer. In this video, I'm going to show you a basic hardware configuration that you should start with, and I'll also show you how to do your first compilation of the code and subsequent compilations adding more features. So let's get started. To get a schematic, of the K3NG here, you should go to the K3NG GitHub site, that's github.com slash K3NG, navigate to K3NG CW here, and go to Wiki. And then over here on the right, you'll see 210 Build Schematic. And you want to go for the basic unit schematic. Click it, and depending on your browser, it'll download the PDF or it'll just display the PDF. And here is the most basic hardware configuration, one that you should start out with. So going through the connections here, we have the left paddle and the right paddle. They connect to pins 2 and 5. We call this left paddle and right paddle rather than dit and dot because you can reverse them but most folks use the left paddle for dit and the right paddle for da, and that's how the keyer is configured by default. And here we have transmitter keying lines. We've depicted two here, transmitter one and transmitter two, but you can have up to six transmitters keyed by the keyer. TX key one, that's keyed by pin 11, digital 11, and transmitter two is keyed by pin 12. You should probably start off with just breadboarding transmitter key 1 and then add transmitter 2 keying later. Then up here we have the speaker output. This is for side tone. This provides a square wave output to your speaker so you can naturally have side tone. You can hear, hear what you're keying if your rig doesn't have that or if you just want to do CW practice, practice sending and want to hear the code. So that is driven by pin 4. This has a square wave that comes out. It uh, turns this transistor on and off. That, uh, in turn here, is amplified. And we have a decoupling capacitor here. And that goes out to your speaker. This is a square wave output. It does sound a little bit raspy. In a future video, I'm going to talk about how you can smooth that out and make that closer to a sine wave and make that a, a little bit of a more pleasing tone. So these connections over here on the right, they're really just the basic connections that you need to get started. If you wire these up, with the exception of transmitter 2 key, really these four right here are the ones that you need to get started. The basic schematic also depicts two other features. This is a potentiometer for controlling your speed. And that voltage uh, goes into the voltage off the potentiometer goes to the analog zero input, A0. And that's activated with feature potentiometer. I'll show you that in a minute where to activate that. And then there's also command buttons. If you want to, to go into command mode, you can set up feature command buttons and have this switch here, this push button switch. And if you're just doing this command button and not the memories, you could just do R3 and the switch here to ground. And that would be perfectly sufficient just for doing a single uh, command button. If you do add memories, uh, the code by default is configured for three memories. You would add R5, R6, and R8 here. And the other side of those uh, uh, push button switches goes to ground as well. You can add more memories uh, later. The code by default is configured for three. I think uh, you can do 10 or 12. I can't recall offhand how many memories you can set the code up for, but uh, you would just extend this resistor network and adjust the appropriate settings in uh, your settings file. Now let's look at the Arduino IDE and compile the code. I have the K3NG Keyer project loaded up. This naturally is the k3ngkeer.ino file, the main file with all of the code. And these are various files for configuration, 
uh, dependencies, uh, header files, and all of that. The file that uh, you want to home in on first is Keir Features and Options. This is what defines the, the, the features and really gives your Keir its uh, individual personality. As I explained in the first video, there's features, and below that there are options which change the behavior of various features. You can compile the code as it is, uh, as you download it from GitHub. You'll notice everything is pretty much commented out with features. So this compilation will not include in it command buttons, command line interface, memories. Uh, they're all commented out here, so they will not be included in the code. So we can compile the code with this button up here. Or if we want to go ahead and compile and upload right to the Arduino, we can hit this button right here. And the code is loaded on our Arduino. And the first thing you'll hear is that hi in uh, CW. That means your keyer has booted up and you're ready to send code. I have my paddle connected. So our keyer is working. Now if you'd like to add command buttons, if you have those wired up on your breadboard, you can uh, comment that out. Uh, I'd also recommend uh, command line interface turning that on and we'll also turn on feature memory so we have all th three of those lines commented back in and they'll be included with the code that is uploaded to the Arduino so we'll go ahead and upload that And our new code is running with our new features. And the paddle's working. Let's go into the command line interface. And we'll need that uh, set up for 1500-200 uh, baud. And you should also have it set up for uh, both new line and carriage return. If you do a backslash s return, you'll get a status readout. This shows you many of the major settings, uh, what's in your memories right now, and you can send code from here if you like by typing it in. So I hope this helps you out in getting your K3NG Arduino CW keyer configured. In subsequent videos, we'll go into more detail on the command line interface and also go into some more sophisticated hardware designs to support more features and peripherals. Thank you for watching and 73.